That's big letters. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ewald Hesse. I'm the CEO of a grid company called Grid Singularity, and we apply blockchain in the energy sector. Um, this startup is actually very young. We, uh, we only incorporated the company in uh, January this year. After releasing the white paper of our technology, we were invited by the MIT Media Lab and presented a few weeks later after uh, at, the, at the MIT Media Lab. And then by now we got contacted by 140 utilities and we basically cannot answer the requests anymore. And it's fun to talk about something or uh, about concepts. As Sherman said, it doesn't exist. It's 1990, the, the AOL CD is yet not there, and the technology maybe takes another two to three years until it's, let's say, capable to do what we want it to do. So we are a team of 26 people uh, spread all over Europe, and it's important to say that this technology, this is, is not the source of Silicon Valley. This technology comes from Europe. This is the core tech development is basically done um, in Berlin. So the team um, in Grid Singularity, we comprise quite a lot of disciplines. We have people which have worked for regulators, partners at PwC. I myself worked in 15 years in the energy sector, electronics, we do hardware and we do software. So what do we do? We do two things. On the one side, we do core tech development because the technology that is out yet there is still not able to do what, it, what we want it to do. And on the other side, we do apps in joint ventures. So it's quite a long shot, and we believe the first apps should be viable or come out on the market maybe in one and a half to two years. So let me just guide you through the core technology. What is core technology? Core technology is, uh, so as, as you see on this picture, we have these data loggers, which is basically a single node in the network. It has its complete own integrity, and it has its own identity. This we do through SIM cards. And the SIM card is the master key to decide with who to share data. So it means in this distributed operating system, we, the first time in, in human history, have, or in internet history, we have the possibility that only the data owner decides with who to share a specific type of data. It, it's a distributed operating system. There is no single person that has access to all the data, which is a major shift going away from platforms to uh, apps being the single use cases. So the operating system, in our idea, should not be the business model. Then what this data logger does, it's, so we have now 120 power plants connected, uh, solar, wind, and hydro. And this data logger, what it does, it reads the data in the assets. We also, could, we also will connect houses. And it, and it saves the data in a way in a blockchain that it can never be changed anymore. This is a single property of the blockchain which is very important. Once a transaction happened, it can never be changed anymore. So if you want to, dec if you want to decide to share your data for a specific use case, you grant access the counterparty to specific data in, in specific granularity. Now the counterparty, when it gets the data, it can actually verify by checking if a footprint in the blockchain was saved when the data happened. So this is something we call authentication. Now this authentication is done by a distributed system. So what this basically done, uh, does, it makes a single source of truth of data. Um, the other thing that we're embedding in the core technology is we're enabling every data point to be priced. So we're enabling direct sale of information between peers. So there is a lot of, in energy markets, knowing what is happening now is the, is the key to be the best energy trader. So there is quite a lot of energy traders which are interested to get data, to buy directly data. And there is quite a lot of renewable power plant owners which are only interested in internal rate of return, but they don't trade. So you go online, you connect your asset, you go online, it's a browser, you log in, you see classical cloud monitoring, like you're monitoring a power plant, but just very reduced. And then there is an app store. So how do we build it? <coughs> you go online, and uh, we're also embedding something like uh, Google Maps for electricity. Um, out of these 120 power plants that we have connected, quite a number of them say, well, we, are, you know, we just give data outside. So they give temperatures outside, how much kilowatt hour is fed into the grid, and they just do it because they're only interested in internal rate of return. And so they donate this data for other startups 
to build apps on this. When we started a year ago, well, we started actually three and a half years ago with research, but when we came online uh, a year ago, it was two startups doing it now. So in, by now, there is 40 startups. We expect by next year, it will be 200 startups working on these applications. So what you can do in this Google Maps for the electricity sector, you could say, show me power plants that produce electricity to the contrary of each other. Uh, let's say solar power plants. And it would spit out solar PV power plants from Chile and from Serbia, simply because the sun shines opposite. What you could do with this data, because it's authenticated when it happened, so you can trust the data, is you can start to ensure the sun by hedging the markets against each other. So you go online, you have the browser, and then there is an app store. And this is five apps that we're building together. By now, Deutsche Energieagentur, they released the report. PwC released the report. And there is many reports coming out. Roughly now, there is probably 150 use cases already, what we can do with this technology. And the, and the, and the use cases are very radical. Let me go through some of them. The, let's say I start with the energy trading app in the middle. This is a project we do together with Enphase, a PV company in Silicon Valley. So we're basically building an agent. This agent has its own integrity enabled by the blockchain. It can't be changed, it can't be deleted, it can't be shut down. And we assign this agent to an asset, let's say a household. This agent has two levels. The lower level has a futures spot and balancing market. We give each appliance in the house a bidding strategy, which is dependent up, upon the owner. So I'm the owner, I, I have a slide, I say I'm price sensitive or I'm comfortable. So by this, I'm deciding upon the bidding strategy of the fridge, um, of the PV, of the battery. And these guys are now autonomously bidding in this agent. Of course, the house is not self-sufficient. So what happens with the delta is the above part of the agent is trading the delta in the next hierarchy. The next hierarchy is, again, exactly the same agent, just assigned to a higher hierarchy, which can be a street or uh, a mini grid. And we do this project actually with a large TSO. So we start from the top where there is uh, trading between countries and we started from the bottom where we have a couple of houses. So what this basically does, it changes the whole structure of the energy market where resiliency is coming from the bottom. It means if one uh, fractal or seller, however you want to call it, has a blackout, it doesn't touch the other one because it's a complete selfishness embedded in the system to have stability from bottom up. So what this actually will, I mean, in Germany, this will take quite a while to, to take off. So we see this app rather coming into development countries. But what this will do is, it, in Germany, we have 270 energy traders. This will make 30 million energy traders, every household. All right, so um, asset valuation. What is asset valuation? Nowadays, asset valuation is a one-time action. So it means I have an asset, I want to refinance, I want to get rid of it, whatever. So the counterparty doesn't trust my data, it, which I provide for my asset. And so they get to a consultancy house, they come to my um, asset with a, uh, a lot of people, and they just validate the data. Well, validating data, we already have it up front. We have data authenticated. So it means we're writing a smart contract with one of the largest engineering houses, which is doing the asset valuation in real time. Just to give an example, asset valuation in a hydropower plant, which is 10 megawatt large, costs 40,000 euro. This app costs 50 euro per month. Now, what does real-time asset valuation mean? Real-time asset valuation is the precondition for an ultimate sharing network. This asset valuation app works for power plants, for any type of asset that is filled with sensors. It can be a, a car as well. So you can make at any time a decision if you want to refinance, you want to rent it out, and so forth, because you know what it's worth right now. Grid congestion, that is a very interesting app as well. So what we do is we assign a single agent to one grid line. And before traders are concluding a trade, uh, the grid line confirms the delivery of electricity as, at a specific time. And so uh, when congestion is happening, means the agent is measuring congestion, it starts to rise its marginal cost. So what this will help, it will help the energy trading app uh, that if neighbors are trading, they only pay the line between themselves. Again, it's one of the largest companies in the world with who we do it. So where are we right now in the blockchain space? We're actually at the peak of inflated expectations. So, so far, what was 
this technology came from Bitcoin. We all know Bitcoin now. Well, at least you know, know it from Sherman. Now we have Ethereum with a higher output of transactions. Still, it's completely transparent, so we can't use it for the energy market. We can't connect a house to the system because anybody who can write code can see what's happening in the house. So it needs, means we need privacy embedded. So we are T0, and the technology is way too slow. You can compare it with an Atari or a C64. Who wants to use C64 for IoT? So what needs to happen is we need to have millions of transactions per second. And we need privacy. And, uh, but if you ask the core tech developers, of which there is maybe 20 in the world, by the way, 10 of these are living in Berlin. Uh, one of them will be on the stage right now uh, after me. If you ask them, guys, when, when is the technology ready? When can we have it? So um, they say, well, maybe two to five years. Why such a big range? Because it is, because it is an experiment. We are, re we are in the middle of a big experiment. The experiment has shown that Ethereum, the most advanced network, went from zero to one billion valuation in eight months. It is the fastest growing company. It's not a company, it's a non-profit organization in the world, in the history of the world. So it's still going to take some time. So, but nevertheless, there is an opportunity how we can enhance the development. So the green one and the, uh, and the red one, these are open blockchains. If we have a closed blockchain, confirmed uh, transa uh, transactors, then we have a bigger advantage already to scale the system and bring pri uh, privacy, uh, to embed privacy. And that's exactly what we do. We went out and we found Rocky Mountain Institute from, uh, from US, one of the most famous think tanks in, uh, in, in the energy sector. And we asked them, guys, do you want to govern uh, uh, energy blockchain uh, consortium? And they, they were very interested. So actually, in a week time, we're meeting 60 of the largest utility in Silicon Valley. And they're all joining a nonprofit foundation called Energy Web Foundation. And they are paying this core technology to be distributed in nonprofit. So it means the core technology, there is no business model in that. It will be open source to anybody. And anybody can build apps on this. So it shows use cases. It builds the infrastructure. It educates regulators and governments. So next December, and then in February 12th or 13th, it will be announced at the big event in, in Vienna. And I would like to invite all of you to this um, event in Vienna called Event Horizon. The meaning is point of no return. We have a lot of utilities coming there from Japan, from US. We have all the 40 startups coming there. You're all highly welcome. Thank you very much.